Would you reckon, I mean, we, we have all talked to women who off the bat is going to tell you, this is what I'm looking for. The list. And lay, and lay it out in great detail. Mm -hmm. You know, forget bringing your truest self to the date. They are bringing this. I'm looking for marriage. I'm looking to, like, you got to be this, that, that. Is that recommended? Like, you know, should a woman come in and just keep it a hundred off the bat about her expectations? <laughs> way, there is no confusion. You know what we, <laughs> we move forward. You signed up for this because I yeah. told you from day one, brother. Yeah, it's, you know, I, as a black man, I try not to make a career telling black women what they should do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I try to refrain from that. There's enough brothers out here doing it and doing it wrong. Um, I, you know, I think that it's really good to walk in and have to norm somebody on what you will and won't accept from them. I think there's something to be said for having those standards. But I think there's also something to be said if you walk into a situation with a list of requirements and in turn, that person doesn't really have that same list for you. And then my, my question is, well, not what do you contribute, but like, what is this person who you're giving this list? What is their definition of contribution? And do you match that? Because some men only want you to just, you know, they, I got everything. I'll take care of everything. This is what I need for you to do. And some men are very, a little bit more, Hey, I want us to be in this thing together. Let's split it down the middle. I know when you talk about splitting anything down the middle in terms of relationships and dating, there's a whole group out there that's ready to snatch your head off, but I'm not talking about just monetarily. I'm talking about in terms of like responsibilities with the kids. Me and my wife tag team my daughter last night. She was up crying till 4 a.m. She's like, I got first shift. When she was too tired, I was like, baby, I got it, tag. That's not everybody's reality. So I know that seems like a big thing. We talking about kids and you talking about a first date, but in the ideal situation, doesn't one lead to the other? And I think like those very early signs kind of show you what a person's ceiling is in certain areas. But, um, you know, I, the, the list for me personally comes on a little strong because I don't like when people come to me with expectations before they even figure out who I am. Um, and I think I understand the frustration, though, in dating with women. I get it. I get why they come with the list. I hear stories from these sisters about dating. Sean, it's crazy, bro. It's crazy. It's crazy, man. <laughs> what some of these dudes out here doing. So I, I get the frustration. And also, they living in a different universe than we do in terms of love and relationships. I could probably spit out babies until I'm 60. There's no clock for me at all. My wife does not have that luxury. You know, and then the Instagram pressure and even my page doesn't help with this. You see the happy family, the black family, the strong goals. It puts a lot of pressure on women to make that happen. And the world puts pressure on women and women put pressure on women. And it's just a lot. So I can understand why the urgency is there. Me personally, I don't like that. I like for us to figure out who we are organically. And then if it works, we move into that. We lean into that thing right there. And if it don't, we can sever ties and try to find happiness elsewhere. That's right. That's right. Okay. Um, is there anything that women can look for, right? Because we've all heard you got to kiss a bunch of frogs before you can be a prince. But can they shorten the process? Like, you're a happily married man. Is there things that women can look for to say, yo, you know what? He's husband material. And I don't need to make a bunch of mistakes before I figure out certain qualities that make a man worth my time. This is somebody I can invest in. This is somebody who's going to pay me back dividends one day. Are there things that women should be looking out for so that they can just cut a million of these bad experiences out of their life and identify this man is actually worth my time and could be husband material. Man, you know, that's shooting hoops in the dark, bro. If, I, <laughs> if I'm in the dark and I shoot eight three-pointers, 
Might make two, might miss eight. Who knows? I, there's, there's no way. It goes actually back to your point about being honest up front. You really don't know who you're dealing with. Was it Will and Jada? I think it was Jada or Will Smith. One of them said that they talked to this married couple who, uh, who was married for years, man. I mean, like, I can't remember. It's a famous couple. It was like they were married for like 50 years. And Will and Jada uh, asked, like, let me get well, some marriage advice. And they said, oh, how long have y'all been married? And I think Will and Jada said, like, oh, 20 years. And they said, oh, y'all don't know each other yet. Mm. That's it. I'm still learning about my wife. I've known her for six years, bro. You never stop learning about other people. And I don't know if there's a secret sauce. I don't think that there is to figure out like, oh, well, this man is marriage material because like he could look great on paper, but in terms of what he wants and what he envisions for himself and the type of man he would, like it's it's one, the man you are when you just out here jugging and you doing your thing and you a single man, that's, that's one man. The man that has a wife and a child, he's not that man. You cannot be. You think differently. You move differently. You have a different purpose. You have different people leaning on you. So you don't know that man yet. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He hasn't gone through that fire to become this thing that you envision for him. You don't know if he's capable yet. You don't know if he has childhood trauma that'll limit his ceiling and his potential. Like you just don't know a person that will yet to put everything in a husband bag or, or out, conversely to put everything in a wife bag. Cause we don't spend enough time telling these young men like, Hey bro, be discerning about the women that you associate yourself with Bob. Like right. don't be out here. And I'm gonna keep it a buck. Don't be out here hitting everything that moves like that. I always tell young dudes, don't be out here hitting everything that moves. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Be smart about the women that you deal with. Be smart about the kind of woman you want raising your daughter with you. You know, and that's not a perfect science either. So it's it's no magic sauce, man. It's dating. Dating sucks. It's a lottery. I could lie to you and I come up with a whole bunch of bullshit and I could sell a book to say, this is what you look for in a man. That does not exist. Men are not a monolith. Black men are not a monolith. We have different motivations, different desires, different past experiences, uh, uh, different ways that we show up in the world. Um, and I think anyone expecting there to be a singular answer is setting themselves up for a lot of this. Yeah, so true, so true. I mean, uh, you know, maybe you just answered where I wanted to go because I, I was gonna ask, why, why do you think so many of us, and, I, and I'm gonna speak about the men because I am a man, Mm -hmm. um, but it applies for women too, is, you know, we, we, we smarten up after the fact. After <laughs> we done let a good woman go, after we done effed it all up, now all of a sudden we get like, like this, this sudden awakening. Yeah. And, and we smarten up, but she's gone. You out the door. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's... It's a number of contributing factors, man. It's, you know, monogamy is difficult for people. We don't, we don't want to acknowledge that. I don't, I don't understand this weird old game we play when we think that just because we're romantically involved with someone, we don't see anybody else. I don't understand how you can spend your formative years uh, as a teenager moving into a young adult having sex with any and everybody you want sampling all of the different plates at the cookout and then you are stuck with a fixed menu at some point like that doesn't make sense for men or women but the desire the expectation is there that's what a relationship is so it's the reality of the relationship versus the reality of your humanness versus the inability for us to connect those things because it's such an uncomfortable point but we see it every day and it's 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 difficult it's difficult. It's difficult for everybody. And I think sometimes the way the human brain is wired, you really don't know what you have until it's gone, man. When my daughter was a baby, I, man, I hated it, bro. I hated every second of it sometimes because it was like, I can't wait for you to grow up and me to have a bond. I don't know what you think. I don't know what you say. And now I miss them days. Man. I just want my little squishy back. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I had to lose it to really understand what it was. And when you play with human emotions, there's not room for understanding. Ain't nobody going to tolerate that. But I think the same range true. And I think that's a problem with both men and women. Like it's, it's very easy to mess up a good thing because you can only see what you have. You can't really see what's in the future. You can't envision the greatness that might 
that might unfold later on. So you can only act on the present. You can only act on your motivations and you can act on your desire. Your brain is like cheating. Like not, I'm, I'm, I hate to go to cheating, but like the whole area that fucks up your relationship real bad. Like the brain is pre-wired to do that. I literally have, uh, I have a book on the brain, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not just talking, I'm a, I'm an empirical evidence kind of guy, man. And it's 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 difficult. That part of the relationship is difficult. It's difficult to be involved with a bunch of men or women and they get into this monogamous relationship where you're used to like, oh, what y'all got on the menu? Oh, I don't like the Caesar salad. Let me get the house salad with the strawberries on it, right? You could do that when you're single, but when you're in this relationship, if you don't like the salad, you gotta eat the damn salad. You gotta throw some salt on that joint until you like that salad again. So that's that's a difficult reframe for people. And we just, we can't acknowledge that because it's such a painful thing to say out loud and to, and to put a level of reality onto. It's the truth. And it's, it's interesting because, you know, even as I think of surviving, entering into, uh, blossoming healthy relationship there's, there's so many of these dichotomies think you know i'm from the south bronx right i got six brothers we were taught my mother like like forget my father my mother taught us you better never let nobody put their hand on you and don't knock them out if you see something like strength was instilled in us it's not celebrated in any way, shape, or form to be soft, to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. But when you enter into a relationship, the same woman who taught you, you better be strong. Mm -hmm. Now they want vulnerability. <laughs> and I, I, I guess I would have to ask you, put your therapist hat on. Oh. How does somebody who comes from an environment Mm -hmm. That advocated strength, being weak, softness was not allowed. It was not tolerated. It was frowned upon. Now, all of a sudden, you're expected to be vulnerable. Open up. Share your feelings. Share your thoughts. How, how does that work? Thank you. It, it all kind of lies in the way you conceptualize strength, because the way you just define strength to me, that isn't strength to me. That's tough. Mm. And toughness and strength are very different. Toughness is more about resilience and strength is more about capacity. To me, my own internal definition. No, well said, well yeah. said. So I think it depends on how you define strength. And Black people, specifically African-Americans, we have a tendency to define strength by whatever is left of us after we've gone through the gauntlet. And that Elaborate, elaborate on that. So you're strong because life has thrown you all these obstacles and it's chipped away at your spirit and it's chipped away at your endurance and it's chipped away at you as a person, but you're still standing at the end of the day. And sometimes we measure strength, not by the fact that you're still standing, but how much stuff you went through in order to still be here. And that's not the definition of strength to me. Um, so it's like, in order to be strong, you gotta go through a whole bunch of shit. You know what I'm saying? And I don't I don't subscribe to that necessarily, even though much like you, that's how I was brought up. That's the environment. So anybody who's listening, you from the D, I don't, the DC area, you from DC, you know, I'm from Southeast. Like it's 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 real, it's real handsy over there. Like ain't much time to talk or nothing. It's reactionary, it's survivalistic. So that's the environment I grew up in. But yeah, man, I don't know. It's it's it's, it's tough. You have to reframe your idea of strength. My new idea of strength is actually flexibility. Flexibility is my idea of strength. Um, and I think I said it at the on, when we were talking on the forum, how silk is so strong, how silk is as strong as steel, uh, pound for pound. It's the strongest natural textile on earth. And strength, steel strength is in its stiffness and its rigidity. But silk's strength is in its flexibility, man. It's so flexible. And it's gonna be a, a, a tough reframe, especially for my brothers out there, but there's strength and flexibility. 
What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.